Okay, now we're going to do an example involving prime and composite numbers. Uh, we're still on module three. We're still doing direct proofs. This is just, this is video eight. It is another example. So once again, let's recall how we do a direct proof. First, we express it as a universal conditional statement. So for all elements of our do x of our domain D, if P of x is true, then Q of x is true. We then, step two, we want to suppose that x is a particular but arbitrarily chosen element of D, for which the hypothesis is true. Remember, that is, we want to assume this first part of the equation. Suppose x is an element of d, and p of x is true. And then finally, uh, we want to conclude our proof by deducing q of x. So let's take a look at this example. We want to prove that every integer greater than 1 is either prime or composite. So this has sort of been implied. We've talked about it. We've said, oh, well, prime numbers, if they're not prime, they're composite as long as they're greater than 1. But right now, we're going to prove it. So first step, we want to write this out as a universal conditional statement. For all x in the integers, right, now we're talking about the integers. Now we, we need this part that says greater than 1. So I'm going to say if x is greater than 1, then what do we know? Well, we know it's either prime or composite. So let's do a proof of this. So we want to start with supposing the first part. So I'm going to suppose that, actually. I'm going to suppose this. Now, the way I make this generic is because the proof is for all x, what I'm going to do is I'm going to suppose that x is any integer, which leaves it generic enough that our proof will work with any integer. So suppose x is any integer greater than 1. Now, that's step two. Now we need to figure out our goal. Our goal is to show that x is prime or composite. All right, that's our goal. So that's what I'm going to put here. We want to show that x is prime or composite. Like that. So let's start by considering all pairs of positive integers r and s such that x equals r times s. Now, we're restricting this to positive. We've got positive integers. And we know these are going to exist. There's going to exist at least two of these because x is positive 
and so at the very least we're going to have x and 1. Right? And we can also conclude that since x equals r, s, and x and r and s are all positive, all pairs, including the two we've already listed and any others that we may have missed, all pairs satisfy the inequalities where one is between r and x, or between r is between one and x, uh, and so is s. Now notice the definition of composite requires these to be strictly less than, right? instead of less than or equal to, but that's okay. We don't need to worry about that because I'm not saying it's composite yet. I'm just saying we've either got R and S are X and 1 or we've got that R and S are between S, X and 1, which means that all pairs are between or including X and 1. So we're going to go on to the next page. If x is prime, then the two displayed pairs, right, the r is equal to x and s is equal to 1, and the r is equal to 1 and x is equal to x, at least those or I guess the two displayed pairs, the two dis yeah, two displayed pairs um, are the only way to write x as r s. And that's again if x is prime. Otherwise, if those aren't the only two pairs then that means there's more pairs then there exists a pair of positive integers r and s such that x is equal to r s and they're between 1 and x. Right? So we're saying if x is prime, then that's those are the only two, 1 and x. And if, if those aren't the only two, then there's more. And if there's more, we know that r and x from our previous slide, they were always going to be between or including 1 and x. So if they're not 1 and x, we know they must be between. 1 and x. And that fits the definition of co composite. 
because we already said that x um, was positive. Right, that was part of this. That x is any integer greater than 1. So those are the two parts of the definition for composite, that x has to be greater than 1 and that x has to equal r times s, where r and s are both between 1 and x. So, therefore, we can conclude that x is composite. So, therefore, this is another way of writing therefore, all positive integers x are either prime or composite. Okay, so this is the proof. Um, here again is a formal written way of writing it, or written version, typed up version. Um, it looks like I did not conclude at the end what we were trying to prove. So let's add that in. Therefore, x is prime or composite. Okay.